and Daphne Kohler, uh, who were two of the three professors uh, involved, uh, decided to start a company and, and build uh, here in Silicon Valley what is now the largest learning platform uh, for higher education in the world. Um, there was all this discussion at the time about how this was going to be massively disruptive for the higher education sector and that bricks and mortar would be gone in 10 years and there would, no one would go to college anymore. Uh, I was president of Yale at the time. I didn't believe a word of that. Uh, I, thought, I saw it as an enormous opportunity for great universities to reach much wider audiences and that's more or less how the story has turned out. Five years later, if you take all of the MOOC platforms, there are, and there are 20 or 30 of them worldwide, to, in the aggregate, with the courses uh, from higher education institutions, there are 58 million registered learners around the world. There are about 700 universities involved and about nearly 7,000 courses. Coursera represents a big share of all that, 26 million uh, of the 58 million registered learners, 150 of the 700 universities, and 2,000 of the 7,000 courses distributed across these um, 20 or 30 platforms. Um, we came at the right time. This, this thing happened at exactly the right time, and we found the sweet spot uh, early on at Coursera, which is we can offer these courses for free, but what people are willing to pay for are credentials that, adva that advance their careers. And so just earlier this year in The Economist, they published a long uh, special report on the importance of lifelong learning in today's world, just along the lines of what Mike illustrated with one of his charts at the end, which is um, that today people change jobs all the time. They move from job to job. The skills are becoming uh, more rapidly uh, obsolete. People need to retrain and learn new skills as they progress in their careers. Uh, whole companies need to retrain employees because, because they're, the, the technology they're employed in is going away. And for all these reasons, the role of lifelong learning is enhanced. Um, and this uh, Economist article pointed that out, cited Coursera, among other uh, providers, as part of the solution to what is a pressing social problem of effectively the skills gap. What you have in today's economy is rapidly growing areas like data science, like cybersecurity, um, that, are, that, are, that have enormous numbers of vacant jobs. It's estimated that about 250,000 data science jobs uh, will go unfilled in the next five, seven years. Actually, that's probably a, a low, at the low end because there are, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, there are about uh, 200,000 unfilled data science jobs in the economy today. We need two million cybersecurity specialists. Um, and there's going to be lots of jobs requiring university degrees that, uh, will, that, that with requiring that, that where people don't have that credential in the years ahead. So how do we deal with it? Well, we, we look to a different type of student. The traditional university student is someone aged 18 to 22 years old, maybe in graduate school between 22 and 28 or something. And they're basically in a residential program. They're in a live classroom. They, they're in a cohort of students alongside them. They, they study at designated times and designated places. Um, and, and, uh, and then they move on to work. Today's lifelong career learner studies on his, on his or her own, maybe in a company with, a, with, with some group facilitation, but most likely not. Most likely on their own at, in flex, with flexible time. And, and these people are you know, anywhere between age 22 and 50. Um, at least that's what our numbers show. Uh, and they have a very different approach to what they need. They come in, they get the education they need, they don't have to sit still for four years and absorb it all. They take a course, they take a multi-course sequence, maybe they take an online degree, they take what they need to advance their careers. So how is Coursera doing this? Okay, um, we have three great advantages. One, we have massive scale and therefore um, uh, we're able to offer very affordable credentials. We have flexibility in the way the product can be used. That matters a lot today. And we give credentials that are increasingly being recognized in the job market. 
the scale is obvious, 26 million learners, uh, now 107 million overall course enrollments over our five years. 89% of our learners are over age 22. So the prophets who foresaw the demise of the bricks and mortar college were wrong. Only 11% of our, of our students are actually at college age or younger. Most people are in that sweet spot in their careers. Um, uh, actually 81% are between 22 and 50. That is where the, that's where the, uh, the, the real population is. We were global from the beginning, unlike most internet companies that start out in Silicon Valley. We didn't you know, start out in the US and then enter one for international market after another. Uh, from the very beginning, more than half of the users were outside the United States. Today, 77% of the users are outside the United States, 45% from em emerging economies, and notably, the, the, companies that Mike, the countries that Mike pointed out, China and India, Two million learners in each in each of those two countries. Um, the, the, another way of saying it: we're, we're truly globally distributed on every continent uh, in substantial numbers. Flexibility: we we have uh, we, we have a very well developed mobile app. Within the last two years, we've invested in making the mobile app essentially the, the equivalent of the desktop laptop experience. And as a consequence, learners are able to. Um, to, to have, in about 97% of our courses are able to get the full experience right on their, on their smartphone or tablet. About 40% of our users today use the mobile app and 25%, 24% use only the mobile app in taking their courses. What that means is people can study any place, anytime, anywhere. Uh, you know, my vision is th that that everybody on the Shanghai subway will be taking Coursera courses on their way to work in the next five years. Um, now, the other thing that, we, that that has propelled our success and has helped us gain uh, credibility and 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 also made the credentials something that people will pay for um, is that we are getting impact. We've, we've surveyed our, we, we published an article in the Harvard Business Review in September 2015 that showed amazing results that, that overwhelming percentage of people who were taking these courses to advance their career reported a benefit, ditto for people looking to advance their educational careers. But what was most astonishing was a very large number of those uh, trying to advance their careers actually got a material benefit. They got a new job. They got a promotion, they got a raise, or they started a business. We, we've, we've since institutionalized that survey, and today we send to every course completer, six months later, a questionnaire to, to ask about the impact of their Coursera experience. And what we've learned in the most recent study is that 84% of those seeking career benefit uh, report that they have gotten career benefit, and, and about 30% globally report they have this material benefit that I indicated, but it re really encouragingly in, in with pe among people in developing economies with low socioeconomic status and no college degree, 48% of those people report a material benefit, a new job, promotion, a raise, or started a business. Um, we know that the, that the, that it's that the micro-credentials are being paid attention to by job uh, interviewers, uh, uh, around the world, it's particularly prevalent, prominent here in Silicon Valley. A recent publication asked uh, people who, that did hiring of software developers, what was the most likely predictor of success in a job interview in software engineering? And years of experience, whether you have a master's degree, whether you founded a startup, mattered almost not at all. It mattered that you went to a top school. It mattered that you worked for a top company, but what mattered most was had this person recently taken a MOOC from Coursera or Udacity? And that was the way the question was phrased, and, and, and that was overwhelmingly the most powerful impact on predictor of job success. That creates a kind of virtuous circle. Learners take these credentials, they post them on LinkedIn, Job interviewers increasingly recognize them. The kind of success that's being marked here creates a virtuous circle because the credentials become more valuable and, and uh, learners uh, then more likely to take these courses. Um, employers are increasingly reporting that they use these credentials 
in hiring they're, they're with increased confidence and uh, and of course that's been uh, that that's been a major um, driver of our growth and and those of other uh, credentialers uh, in this space. Um, Coursera is adapted. We uh, in in recent um, in the last year and a half really to serving the needs of career learners even more uh, comprehensively. And what I mean by that is this: we started we started in 2012 with single courses. Oh, actually, we iterated on that and decided the optimal size of a course was not a college semester length course, but rather four weeks of about three or four hours of video per week that maximized retention. And so what we did is we built sequences called specializations that were larger chunks of content. That was our initial product market fit. The, the multi-course sequences in data science, in computer science, and in business, uh, we had a, a, very, a very successful data science offering from Johns Hopkins University and a remarkably successful business fundamentals sequence from Wharton that were the first big drivers of revenue for the company back in 2014 and 15. Um, this year, we've moved beyond, uh, actually starting in 2016, moved beyond to offer online degrees. And I'll come explain some of that later, but that creates a, now essentially a full portfolio. Anything between a course and a full degree is available, and you can you, whatever whatever you need to advance your career is available. We started working with individual learners, strictly a B two C business, but a year ago we entered the enterprise market with Coursera for business and Coursera for nonprofits and governments. So now we're catching learners everywhere they are. On the, at the workplace uh, in government workforce development programs as well as on their own. Our degree programs are off to a really strong start. We have four degrees launched now. Um, three at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, an MBA, a master's in computer science, just starting uh, in, in two months, a master's degree in accountancy, and a master's in entrepreneurship and innovation from HEC, the leading French business school. Um, we, we've had terrific success with these programs, the two that have been running for a while. Um, we had 400 students enroll in the MBA program in 2016. That's moving toward, uh, toward 1,000 uh, per year in steady state. Uh, and, and we've had terrific success with the retention. Uh, and, and here's the big advantage. It costs us, so far, nothing to market these programs. Why? Because we have 26 million learners and their email addresses. And, and that, is a, that is a hugely disruptive opportunity for us in the degree space because all of the other online providers essentially spend 30 to 40% of tuition on, on customer acquisition. And we, so far, haven't had, haven't had to spend anything. Obviously, as we grow our degree portfolio to 20 to 50 to 100 degrees, we may have to, but we'll still have that inherent advantage of lower cost customer acquisition uh, in that space. And by the way, I'm, I skipped over retention. 94% of the students that, that started the MBA program in the first cohort, January 2016, are still in the program. So we're really proud of that. Um, Coursera for business, uh, we, we, we realized that that huge numbers of our learners were taking the courses at their workplace. We, had, we, had, uh, we looked at the data in early 2016 and noticed you know, 50,000 course enrollments from people with Amazon.com email addresses, 45,000 from Cisco, 45,000 from IBM, and we thought, there's a market here. And it really, I've hard, I, I, this is a, an, it was an amazing experience to go to big companies and to their HR people and learning development people. It was like we walked in the door with something they couldn't imagine was for real. That is, you know, the best professors in the world teaching career relevant subjects to their employees. Beats, you know, your in house corporate trainers. It beats off the shel shelf 20 minute, you know, how to uh, courses from some of the other providers of video libraries, um, and it just, it, just, it just resonated. So we've, we, we're just off to a roaring start in the enterprise business with 60 enterprise customers in, signed in about 15 months 
um, and a really strong pipeline. Um, very exciting, a lot of name brands, and uh, 50 of those are companies, 10 of them are governments and nonprofits. And this is something that really resonates with the social mission that we founded, that was fit, fit founded the company, which is you know, really giving opportunity to people. And so we have, we're, we're in uh, seven countries with, in various kinds of workforce development programs in Kazakhstan and Egypt and Pakistan, Malaysia, Mongolia, Singapore. Um, I might have forgotten one, but but we're but we're, uh, we're going great guns there, and even in the United States, we've begun to make some headway. We've got a wonderful program for educating people uh, in the last six months of their military careers to prepare them for civilian employment in connection with the institution for uh, veterans and military families. Um, I see great opportunities ahead in that area. Um, Singapore is just worth noting. This is probably the most enlightened government when it comes to workforce development anywhere on the planet. And it, way back in 2014 when our data science sequence was launched, just shortly afterward, they came to us and said we want to sponsor you know, hundreds of our citizens to become data scientists. And so that was our first sort of group offering really before we even had a business line. Today, uh, starting, starting last year, Singapore introduced a program called Skills Future. And part of Skills Future is a tax credit for anyone over age 25 who wants to take vocationally relevant courses, um, whether it be live or online. I think I initially thought it was gonna be live and all the Singapore institutions were gonna participate, but we got in the door right away. And by the time the program officially launched, we had 600 certified courses, now we have nearly 1,000, that are eligible for this, for, the, for essentially for the government to reimburse the cost. Um, and that's been phenomenally successful of the, of the Singaporean citizens who've enrolled in this program, or taken advantage of this program. So far, we have about half of all of the, of all of the enrollments. Um, I, want to, I want to hit one more theme, which is, so five years after the MOOC, what is the story with, um, uh, with the university, like, have we? Is the bricks are the bricks and mortar crumbling? Are people running for the exits? No, enrollments are rising. There's no there's no there's no fundamental sea change in the ordinary business of universities. Why? Because what we're doing is leveraging the strength of universities and the great scholarship and teaching capabilities that they have to take them to the whole planet. Uh, I mean, I have to tell you, when I was president of Yale, and an early in participant in online learning way back in 2000, um, I, could, I saw right away that this was, this was a hugely positive thing for the professorate. Professors love the idea of reaching learners all over the world, especially for free or low cost. And, and uh, the, the, you know, they love the feeling that, that their scholarship was actually influencing more than the 15 people in their seminar or the 75 people in their, in their narrow specialization who actually read the journal articles they wrote. Um, this was a big, a big change and it's, it, it is really working. Uh, uh, and, and so what I see is, at least for the very best universities in the world, if you look 10 years out, I think those universities will be able to maintain their high quality undergraduate and graduate degree programs that they offer on campus. But they're gonna do a lot more they're gonna offer high quality courses fully online uh, 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 to, to people around the world and, and indeed master's programs among degrees that, that are offered are the most amenable to online education. I mean, undergraduates need the hand-holding and the social development and the, and the maturation that's part that goes with being a residential program. But master's students, particularly professional master's students, they just need to acquire the skills. And they can do that very effectively online, as effectively as in person. Um, I, am at, I, I think within 10 years, we'll see a very widely developed ecosystem of credits being offered by universities for application at other places. So a big, a big market in transferable credits that, that, uh, that facilitate people that drop out so they can get their degree. It will help people, um, it will also help people who have to, you know, for financial reasons, who have to work maybe for a year or two before they can start college. All of those use cases will get covered, I think, um, by, by top universities. Uh, I think you'll see universities around the world 
taking the high quality content that Coursera universities offer um, and using it in their programs. You think of, China, of uh, India and Brazil, two countries with very large populations with a stated goal of taking the enrollment ratios, that is the percentage of age cohort in college, from 10% to 30% over the next 15 years. How are they gonna do that? It's, too, it's prohibitively expensive to build that much bricks and mortar, and they don't have the faculty to do it. Online education from high quality institutions is the answer to make that, to make that feasible. And then finally, um, I, I think you're gonna see a huge uh, development of uh, using high quality educational materials in the workplace. I'm thinking of AT&T right now, which is using Coursera courses and offering them to 140,000 of their employees. Um, this is a company that knows that it's got, for example, 40,000 people employed in landlines, as landline technicians or switchboard operators in the, on the old technology. Those people are either gonna lose their jobs in the next decade or they're gonna be retrained. And Randall Stevenson and his team are determined to use online education as a way of retraining the bulk of those people to take new jobs in, in areas of technology that, that, uh, that will be part of the company's future. So um, I think, you know, it's, it's been five years. We are, we are not doing away with the university anytime soon. We're actually gonna make universities more socially valuable and more important, and we're gonna transform tens of millions, hundreds of millions of lives in the years ahead. Thank you.